<laughs> but praise God. Well, family, let me say this before we get into the Word of God this morning. And I'd like everyone to please stand if you can stand. You know, the words in this book, they're words, but they're not just words. They're supernatural words. Amen. Well, would you agree with that? And, and, and the Word of God tells us that we should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. We want to go to the book of Proverbs this morning. Proverbs, the 18th chapter. Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18, verse 19. And I'd like for all of us to read this. The New American Standard Bible, you can read it out of your Bible, or you can read it off the screen. Let's read together. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And contentions are like the bars of a citadel. Now read that one more time, a little louder. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And contentions are like the bars of a citadel. Amen. You may be seated. A brother or a sister that's offended is harder to be won than a strong city. In other words, when a person gets offended, it's almost nothing you can do. Almost nothing you can say. I want to talk this morning a little bit about the danger of staying offended. Staying offended. The dangers of staying offended. Now, being offended is one thing. Because I really believe that, you know, there's a, a, a cycle that comes around where all of us get offended. And I think many times God uses those times to mature us to see how we will respond and not react. Now, I hope you all are listening this morning because, you know, I really believe that this is what God wants me to talk about this morning. And when we stay offended, we allow ourselves to be open for evil spirits to come in. When we stay offended. See, some people choose to stay offended and there, not, there's nothing anybody can say to them nothing they can, anybody can do not even the word of God penetrates their heart because staying offended is a choice that you make I've heard people say things like you know uh, I, forg I have forgiven them but I don't want to see them or talk to them again Christians now, just, just suppose with me for a moment that if God said, I have forgiven them, but I don't want to see them or talk to them again. Suppose God was that way with us. You know, the Bible talks about us being imitators of God. In other words, we're to act in the same characteristics that the Lord has. Okay? It is a choice to stay offended choice. In Matthew 24, 10, Jesus began to talk about the end times, and he says basically that in the end times, in the last days, that people will become offended at one another and begin to betray and hate one another. Let me tell you, that day is upon us already. There are people who say they love the Lord, but they hate other Christians, they hate other Christians, and they, they betray them, and they choose to stay offended. You know, <clears throat> when a person is hurt uh, deeply, you can have a root of bitterness, a root of bitterness. Now, here, here's, here's what the Lord begin to show me last night is that sometimes people have been so hurt that the hurt is very deep, very, very deep, so deep that they think that they have actually forgiven the person and they're no longer offended, but really they still are offended. They still, because the pain of the hurt went so deep. 
Now, but remember when you stay offended, you open the door for the devil to come in. You open the door. Now, the word offended comes from the word scandalon, a Hebrew word, S-K-A-N-D-O-L-O-N, scandalon. This is, this, we get the word scandal from the word scandalon. Now, you know what scandal is all about. Matter of fact, they have a TV series that talks about scandal. But we get, we get the word scandal from scandalon. Now, <clears throat> the word scandalon, this, this is a Greek word, means basically two things. Number one, it means that it's a trap or a snare that is set with a bait for you to take. Mm. Glory. And it also means that it's a stumbling block that causes you to fall into sin. So two meanings. Whenever you see the word stumbling block in, in Scripture, it really is talking about being offended. Okay? Jesus talked about, you know, if you, you, you cause one of these little ones to stumble, you know, that, that is a terrible thing. You might as well put a, a mouse, millstone around your neck and go in the water because, you know, being offended and staying offended is very dangerous. Now, I want to go back and talk a little bit about uh, this first definition for scandalon, which is a trap. Because this is the primary definition for being offended. Now, I, wanna, I have a little box here I want to show you here. <clears throat> the word scandalon talks about a, a trap, which is, a, little, which is a, a, a little box like this with bait on it for a little mouse or something, I guess you could say, to go in there. And here's, here's the bait. This is the bait that Satan gives us. And you go in, and you get that bait, and the trap falls on top of you, and you can't get away. You can't get away. So, you, so I want you to understand that. It's a trap. It's a snare. Being offended is a trap. And how you respond to the bait, it's like, it's like, those, how many fishermen, we have any people that go fishing? You always use a little piece of fish to catch a bigger fish. And Satan is always looking to catch one of God's warriors. Because the weapon of offense is such an effective weapon. Because if he can hurt you very badly, then what's going to happen is you're going to stay offended. Because it's going to take a root of bitterness. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. <clears throat> verses 23 and 26. 2 Timothy. Please write these scriptures down this morning. And it reads, But refuse foolish and ignorant speculations, knowing that they produce what? Quarrels. The Lord's bondservant must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to all, able to teach, patient when wrong. With gentleness, correcting those who are in opposition, if perhaps God may grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of the truth. And they may come to their senses and escape from the snare or the trap of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. See, when you stay offended, the devil uses you. Being offended is one thing, but staying offended is another. And many people choose to stay offended because they want to hold on to it. Now, the message Bible reads like this. Refuse to get involved in inane discussions. They always end up in fights. God's servants must not be argumentative, but a gentle listener and a teacher who keeps cool. Working firmly but patiently with those who refuse to obey. You never know how or when God might sober them up with a change of heart and a, and a turning to the truth. Enabling them to escape, escape, Remember the box now. The devil's trap where they are caught and held captive, forced to run his errands. 
Difficult times ahead. So that trap, that trap. So when, when, we, when we choose to stay offended, what it, what it does, it, it, it causes us to be consumed with hate and anger. But one, of the, but one of the things that also happens is we begin to have grudges. You know, a grudge is just like, like, a, like a small baby. You know, uh, if you nurse, when you nurse the baby, the baby gets bigger. And what we tend to do with grudges, we nurse our grudges, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Christians know how to nurse their grudges. See, grudges eventually gives you the desire to want to retaliate and take revenge. It gives you the desire to want to do that. Now, how can we worship God and say we are a servant of God and choose to stay offended and allow a grudge to come where, you know, I don't want to see them. I forgive them. I don't want to talk to them. What if God said, I don't want to, I forgive them, but I don't want to see them or talk to them ever again. How many times have you offended God? <laughs> By doing something you know you shouldn't have done against his word. Suppose God said, you know what, I forgive them, but I don't want to talk to them or see them ever again. But we do that with people. We do that even with our brothers and sisters in the Lord. It's a danger to be like that. It's a danger to be like that. Now, you know something else about staying offended? Staying offended, which is a choice is that it provokes and triggers betrayal. It provokes and triggers betrayal when a person chooses to stay offended. Now, we, we know that from scripture, scripture because Judas, now, this is something, you know, I, I, I just, I, I'm having to wrap my understanding around it. Jesus chose personally handpick each one of his disciples. He handpicked them. Jesus picked them. Now, God is God. War still broke out in heaven. He created Satan. Jesus picked Judas. But when Judas, when they were in the home of Mary Madeline, and she poured that expensive perfume on Jesus. And him being the, the treasurer, you know. Out of all the people, he's the only one who spoke up. People who handle money need to be very careful. Husbands and wives, if you're handling the money in the home, you think you have a right to just say anything to your mate or even a person that is in charge of handling money. You know, Judas was the only one that spoke up. And he says, why are you, pour, why are you allowing, allowing this uh, expensive perfume to be poured out like that? This, we, this is about 300 denarii. We could take that money and give it to the poor. And Jesus says, leave her alone. Now, when I, I believe when time Jesus opened his mouth out and said, just leave her alone. I believe, I believe the, the spirit of offense was coming on Judas. In other words, he was saying, how can he talk to me like that? And like I shared with you on, a, on a resurrection, I think, you know, Judas was the only one that never called Jesus Lord. He always called him rabbi, a teacher. I'm always careful that people that don't, don't want to say pastor, you know. See, they didn't know. I mean, Judas really didn't respect who Jesus was. So, you know, he, he, got a, he, he was offended. And you know what happened? He betrayed Jesus. Jesus picked him. But, you know, let's go a little deeper. Absalom, the son of David, King David, 
the best king that Israel ever had. Absalom was David's son. David loved Absalom. But Amnon, David's half-brother, raped his sister Tamar. And David did nothing. And Absalom became offended with David. Are y'all still with me? He became offended with David. And so what Absalom did, he took matters into his own hands and he killed Amnon. But he was offended with his father. And so he decided to try to win the hearts of the people and try to take over the kingdom from David. And you know the rest of the story. Matter of fact, during the, the uprising, he even slept with seven of, I mean, six of David's uh, concubines in public. In public, so everybody could see. Now watch this. Ahithophel, which was David's right-hand man, trusted advisor. David shared all of his secrets with him. You, you know what happened with Ahithophel? See, Ahithophel was also the grandfather of Bathsheba. And Bathsheba, David slept with Bathsheba had Uriah killed, and so Ahithophel felt like David, uh, uh, sh should I say, shamed the family. And he had, he was offended with David. So when Absalom came against his father, Ahithophel changed sides. One of the worst things that could ever happen is somebody that you really trust go and change sides and tell all the secrets to, to someone that's your enemy. Well, you know what happened to Ahithophel. If you don't know, read your Bible. But when we talk about staying offended, understand that being offended is one thing, but staying offended is something else. It's a choice. Now, offense usually comes by what people say to you, what people don't say to you, what people do to you, or what people should have done for you. Because really, offense, is anybody getting anything this morning? Yes. Offense is really no more than wounded feelings. Wounded feelings. And when your feelings are wounded, it takes a while sometimes to heal it. And I'm going to share with you how those feelings can be healed. If you, if you know the Lord, you, you have a way out. You have a way out of coming out of that trap from the enemy. Now, we have to stop looking for ways to be offended. You can tell. Sometimes people are looking for something. Just offend me. Just offend me so I can have a reason. Just offend me. Just offend me. Just offend me. See, as a pastor, I can feel that. I just don't say it. I just wait till God gives me a word. Some people even get offended at the word. Well, you know, he shouldn't preach that. No, you know. I, I shared a story. I don't have any stories for you this morning. I shared a story of a pastor uh, that my wife and I were dealing with kind of just met them on, on occasions, and he preached a message two Sundays in a row on sex. And the deacons of the church came to him and said, don't preach about sex no more because people don't want to hear it. He said, but this is what the Lord told me to do right now. He came the third Sunday and preached about sex again. They ousted the pastor from the church. And really, there was, uh, I'll use the word, illegal sex going on in the church. And, and the people who that were involved with it didn't want to hear it because they didn't want to feel convicted. They wanted to keep doing what they were doing. Oh, y'all y'all not hearing what I'm saying. And see, that not only works with, with things like sex, but anything 
people are doing, they don't want to hear it. But that devil is alive. So stop looking for ways to be offended. What you look for, you will find. Stop looking for ways to be offended. What you look for, you will find. Stop looking for, for what people do to you. And start looking for what people do for you. So when you start celebrating the good and not just the bad. But people are always looking for what people are doing to you. So we're in a fight. Oh, that should have, we're in a fight. I just knew the Lord was going to give me something about the fight today, you know? I'll just say this. Stay in the fight to the final round. Stay in the fight until the final round. We're in a fight. And the fight is fixed. We will win, but you have to obey the word of God. Put your hands together and thank the Lord this morning. Now, that would have been a good message this morning. Stay in the fight till the final round. Oh, Lord, why couldn't I preach that one? That would have been a good one, huh? Because some people want to get out of the fight at the first or second round, you know. But can you go to distance? Oh, Lord, that, now that, that, that's powerful. Can you go to distance? Some people have only gone four rounds, but can you go 12 rounds? Woo! Lord, maybe I'll say that for another time. Because I hear Mayweather's going to fight again in September, so I'll just... All right. Stay in the, write that down. Stay in the fight until the final round. I'm going to have to preach up one next time. All right. <laughs> When a person chooses to stay offended, they are focusing on themselves. Stop focusing on yourself. Stop focusing on the Word of God. When you, when you choose to stay offended, it can cause you to lose your passion for the Lord and the things of God and the people of God. Now, you think you may have the passion that you have, but if, if you are offended, you don't have the full passion that the Lord wants you to have. Are y'all still with me? Learn how to just let it go. J just let the thing go. Now, some people don't want to let it go. They want to just hold it so they can just say, you know. When you let it go, it doesn't mean that the person is going to be exonerated. It doesn't mean that. Please write this down. What it means is that you turn it over to the Lord. Learn how to just turn it over to the Lord and trust God to deal with it. Now, don't turn it over to the Lord saying, Lord, you know, deal with them good. You know, that's not right either. That's not right. Because I, I think a lot of times when we, we turn it over to the Lord, you think the Lord's not doing anything. And you say, God, you know, I don't turn it over to you. You let people just walk around, you know. You don't want, to, want nothing bad to happen. Don't be like that. And I think a lot of times the Lord allows long lapses to go just to see where your heart's at. And if you're just saying, get him, get him, God, get him, God, you know what they did, you know. God says, you know what? Something needs to happen in you. Let me see the hands of anybody who's getting something in here this morning. All right. Staying offended and blow, it blocks your enjoyment of life. And it also blocks the blessings of God. It blocks the best that God has to offer you. It blocks it. It's a blessing blocker. That's what it is. Being a, staying offended is a blessing blocker. You may get blessed, but you won't get God's best. Staying offended just, just weighs you down. It weighs you down. It weighs you down. 
especially if you know you are offended and you choose to stay offended, it's just a weight on you. And God doesn't want you to be weighted down like that. Now, I, here's a play with words I want to say, but I, but, it, but I want you to get this. The best defense, the best defense is to deal with your offense. All right. In other words, the best way to deal with your offense, being offended, is to get close to the Lord. Stay close to the Lord so you can be convicted by the Holy Spirit. And so yet you can rightly Respond. You got to stay close to the Lord. That's how you get out of staying offended. If you're close to the Lord, and then you have right, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you move and say, I can't do this. I can't be like this. Let's go to the book of James. James. James 4. Verses 16 through 17. James 4. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, you know what's right to do. To him it is sin. People know that they should not stay offended, but they still choose to do it. That's sin. Look at it this, in the Message Bible. It says this. As it is, you are full of your grandiose selves. All such vaunting self-importance is evil. you got to crush that ego. In fact, if you know the right thing to do and don't do it, That for you is evil, destroying your life from within. It's evil if you know what to do and you don't do it. Are y'all still with me? Now, setting high expectations on people and something happens, they do something or say something or don't do something, putting high expectations can cause you to fall even greater being offended. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't want to set so many, you know, we all are human and we make mistakes. Don't say, you know, I can't believe they did that. Nobody's perfect. All right? We all make mistakes. We all say things we shouldn't say sometimes. You've got to be able to show mercy and grace to people. I wish we had just somebody just put your hands together and clap your hands just for a minute. The devil uses staying offended to divide and conquer, to divide and conquer marriages. There's nothing more effective than having a mate offended at the other mate. It will divide and conquer families. It will divide and conquer best relationships. Relationships that God put together being offended and staying offended would cause division and conquering. And I, I, I may also submit that staying offended has caused most, more churches to split than anything else. And most people leave churches because they become offended. So what we have is a lot of offended people, they just go from church to church. Oh yeah. Not gonna happen here, not gonna happen here. And somebody says, huh, you know what? I'm just sick of the whole body of Christ. I'm just gonna go to, I'm gonna be a Muslim, you know. I'm gonna be, you know, this and that and the other. You just stay offended. There's no perfect church. Because there's no perfect people. So, so the enemy uses staying offended to divide and conquer not only marriages and families and the best relationships 
and even businesses and churches, but also staying offended delays God's plans for your life. God is waiting for you to get yourself together. And then, you know, you're wondering why this and why this. God says, you know what? You still got some work to do. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. And we got to remember that no one is exempt from being offended. Not me, not you. I don't care how long you've been walking with the Lord. I don't care how much you tithe, how much you, you, you pray. Sometimes God allows a cycle to come around where you get offended. And God uses that to mature you. So you have to learn how to respond and not just react. Come on. Nothing happens unless it's Father filtered. Remember that. So if you get offended, you say, you know what? You know, you get all of this huffy and puffiness. And God says, now don't, don't react. Respond so we can move on and go to something else. Every person that has ever lived on this earth, that will ever live on this earth, has been offended at one time or another. No one is exempt from being offended. No one. Oh, pastor just has it all together. No, the devil will come trying to make me get offended too. Oh, you know, uh, the worship leader, Sadina, this is Gwen, they just have it all together. Kurt just comes out and singing there. Come on, y'all, you know. You know he just has it together all the time. He, I just can't stand him. You know, I just, you know. <laughs> no, we have to keep going. You got to keep going. You got to stay in the fight until the final round. I keep coming back up in my spirit. <laughs> Stay in the fight to the final round. But here is the catalyst, and here is the foundational thing that we must always remember, those of us who name the name of Jesus. And that is that love should always cover a multitude of sins. Love needs to cover If you don't have love, it's just a bunch of noise. Learn how to let that love cover. Let's look at 1 Peter 4. 1 Peter 4, verses 7 and 8. The end of all things is near. How many would agree to that? The end of all things is near. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Above all, above all. Keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude of sin. Above everything. Message Bible says this. Everything in the world is about to be wrapped up. So take nothing for granted. Stay wide awake in prayer. Stay wide awake in prayer. Just don't let it be just a routine. You know, stay wide awake. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Most of all, love each other as if your life depended on it. Love each other. Why? Because the enemy is setting a trap, that bait. Love makes up for practically anything. And if you, when, you, when you marry people, when you learn that, I'm telling you, your marriages will go better. When you learn that, even your relationship with your children will go better. Y'all still with me? Now, I said earlier that this book is a book of words, but it's supernatural words. Spirit and life. We don't, we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, I want to close with one more scripture. And that's in the book of Psalms, 165. I'm, verse, I'm sorry, chapter 119, verse 165. Those who love your law have great peace. And nothing causes them, i tell you what that word stumble means, stumble. Stumble. Trapped and then stumbling block. The Amplified says this, very important passage of scripture. Great peace have they who love your law, who loves this. Nothing shall offend them 
or make them stumble. In other words, being offended is one thing, but staying offended is another. Now, family, listen. Listen carefully. The Bible says that a brother that, a, that is, is offended is harder to win than a strong city. I'm not asking you to say that, well, pastor, are you saying that, you know, what they did to me or what they didn't do, you know, their hurt was so deep that I should just let it go? Look, it, it doesn't exonerate them. What I'm asking you to do, especially during this period of time, this 49 days of personal refinement, what I'm asking you to do is say, Lord, I'm letting it go, and I'm turning it over to you. Close your Bibles. I'd like to pray with those of you that know that there's some deep hurt somewhere. And you, you, you still uh, may be offended. Maybe you've been recently offended. Let, let me just pray over you this morning that you'll be able to turn it over to the Lord. Come, come let me just pray for you real quickly. And we're going to do communion. Come, come and say, Lord, I'm going to turn this over to you. I'm going to turn them over to you. Remember, offense, being offended is no more than wounded feelings. Wounded feelings. I pray that the word ministered to you today. Yes. I pray that you, you receive the impartation of the Holy Spirit inside you to be sensitive. Now, there's a difference between being offended and being sensitive. But some people are oversensitive and they get offended very easily. I'm going to wait till all of you come and gather before I begin to pray. Sometimes remember the people you love and the people that are closest to you can hurt you the worst because they're close to you. I'm asking you to just turn it over to the Lord. Turn them over to the Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. And those seated in your seat, just bow your head, please. Father, sometimes we have hurt that is so deep. And we may have come to the altar to ask you, to help us to forgive. And we think we did it. And Lord, we returned to our normal life. And we feel that perhaps maybe everything is gone. But Lord, deep inside, we know that, that that pain of that thing comes back up. And we find ourselves still offended. Lord, I'm praying for those that have that on them this morning. Especially you've been hurt by a family member, a loved one, a close friend. God, I ask, Lord, that you would allow that person to say, Lord, I, I turn it over to you. Say that with me. I turn it over to you. And I turn them over to you. Now, don't start praying for something bad to happen. Just let God handle it. Let God handle it. Don't you get involved with it. Remember, it causes hatred and anger. And don't let that grudge come because you'll begin to nurse that grudge. Thank you, Lord, for just the sensitivity that you're going to bring now, Lord. That the Holy Spirit speaks, Lord, that we're not going to just keep doing what we've been doing. But we're going to change our ways because knowing what's right to do and not doing it is sin, Lord. Now lift those hands. Father, I thank you that you're, you're cleansing us. You're cleansing us, Lord, of ourselves. That we might be vessels of honor for you, Lord. And Lord, as we take communion today, Lord, let there be a freshness and a newness 
that comes in our spirit and in our mind, Lord. We don't want this being offended to block our enjoyment in life or be a blessing blocker in our life. We turn it over to you, Lord Jesus. We turn it over to you, God. Don't want to go into another month, Lord, like that. And let it go, Lord Jesus. I speak blessings now, Lord, for anyone that has fallen into the trap. And I, I pray now, Lord, that they're coming out of that captivity. They took the bait. But now, Lord, you're raising that trap up and allowing them to come out. Let them be wise enough to see the next trap, Lord. And if they do get offended, that they won't stay offended. They'll come out. Now, Lord, send your peace. Send, send your peace to their minds. Send your peace, Lord, that goes past their understanding into their hearts, Lord, into their daily activities, into their behavior, Lord. That truly we can say, Lord, that we're imitators of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. You know, family, I want to tell you, I'm so thankful that, you know, those of you that listened to that message heard that message. Because it, it can deliver you in a way that you don't even, you can't even imagine. The way to be lifted off, all right? Amen. Give somebody a hug at the altar. You hug somebody. Let's go. Let's stand all over the house. Begin to worship.